And this is a little exercise that everyone can do that's a business exercise. Create a value curve with between you and your competitors nearby and see mm. what they offer and what you could potentially offer and what is different between the two. And whatever is different is the stuff that you need to highlight in whatever marketing you do on your website or anything like that. Hello, and welcome to episode 205 of the Wisdom in the Tangents podcast. I am your host, John Mansfield. Um, I'm a photographer and business coach. And on this podcast, I have candid conversations with other photographers, business coaches, life coaches, other experts in the industry. And uh, today, my guest is, I don't know why I put that long of a pause in there, dramatic pause today. My guest is Ashley Snyder. Uh, she is a senior photographer who has cultivated a like an amazing quality and luxury experience for her grad students. Uh, not her students, but you know, the students that she photographs, her clients. And she has created this with a lot of demand that has really led her to be the go-to photographer in the Clemson, South Carolina area. And that's what we're talking about today is how you can create an experience that really sets you to be the go-to photographer in your area for your niche in what you want to do. So let's get into my conversation with Ashley Snyder. Welcome to welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'm I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to chat again. I know I just I just told everyone uh, before that uh, I was on your podcast recently and uh, and had a great time. Uh, so I am excited to get to chat with you again. So yeah, welcome to my show. Yeah, I'm so excited to chat today. I think it's going to be a great topic. And like when you were on my podcast, we chatted for a long time. So I'm excited. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Sometimes I'm like, oh man, I am so, so long winded and also just like want to talk about all the things and enjoy talking mm -hmm. with people because like I'm at home most of the time and not around people anymore like I used to be. And uh, yeah, so I just love talking to adults, uh, really. I mean, my kids are cool, but uh, you know, it's, it's always the same mermaids and Paw Patrol. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, I, which we can talk about mermaids and Paw Patrol if you'd like. <laughs> to. I'm sorry. My niece has me beat on expert for Paw Patrol. So <laughs> unfortunately oh, yeah. I'm not <laughs> in there. So yeah. Oh yeah. And now they've got the mighty pups and they have cats now too. I think I, I saw them the other one. day. That's new. <laughs> that was new for me too. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, but yeah, we won't be talking about any of those things. <laughs> Uh, but we will be talking about photography and business and, and all that. And kind of before we get into like, who are you, where are you based? What do you shoot? All of that. Um, mm -hmm. I like to bring in a question from, uh, from the listeners, uh, just a random That's question okay. could be business related, could be <laughs> not. Um, and this one is from Annie and I had it pulled up. Here we go. Um, Annie asks, if you were a place, what place would you be? Who? Um, honestly, the first thing that popped in my head was my hometown, which is Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Um, cool. I mean, I grew up going to the beach, and I'm a very like beachy water person. So I think like sunny, bubbly. I think that ties in really well. I mean, it sounds accurate. Yeah, uh, that is. <laughs> That is one that I've always wanted to go Hilton Head and um, mm -hmm. what's the other one? Turtle Bay? Nope. Maybe. I don't know. It's it's one I in, I think, Georgia or something um, that I those were always on my list of of places to go. Um, but yeah, no, I love that. It does seem very fitting, um, just mm -hmm. like with your personality and everything. Just I love the beach. I love I love like playing. I'm very active on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, not a surfer, but I like to do other things, just like <laughs> playing around, <It's> okay. volleyball, <laughs> jumping. Yeah, um, I'm. You know, we have the beach. The beaches that we have here in Texas are in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's just mm -hmm. small, little like one foot waves. So there's That's how not it is much. in Hilton Head, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. It's not you don't surf in Hilton Head, actually. A lot of boogie boarding. Um... Mm -hmm. I had friends who like they like to surf so they would drive up to like Charleston or like Buford area like hunting an island and they'd have yeah. little better ways but it was more like when hurricane season came and that's when the waves got a little bigger and that's when yeah. more people would go surfing. 
Okay. Okay. So yeah, Hilton Head's kind of like a, a like a chill beach. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it is. I like that. I like just the the sound of the waves is just so mm-hmm. calming uh, for me. I just love anything anything with the water. So okay, well, cool. I feel like we already know we already know you pretty well from just that. <laughs> but give us a little bit of where you're currently based and uh, what you photograph, what you do. Yeah, so I'm currently based in Clemson, South Carolina. I'm actually a student at the university, so that's why I'm up here now. And tying into that, I'm a senior and grad photographer up here. And I've been doing that for about a year and a half now. Okay, nice. Nice. Mostly mostly there at Clemson, or do you, like... Mm -hmm travel a good bit i would imagine like you've got a lot of connections being a student there (laughs) (laughs) majority of my sessions are clemson graduates but i have had a lot of like high school seniors and for those i do travel to some extent just because of like the greenville area and just suburbs in that area as well oh nice okay well that's very cool and um i love that that's the did that just kind of like organically happen because like Mm -hmm. you had a camera and someone was needing some graduation photos cool basically um i think i've mentioned this to you before but obviously other one other people won't know my mom's a photographer back home and so i grew up in this industry and like learning about it and i was actually an associate photographer for her in high school before i even came to clemson and so all my friends here at clemson knew me as oh my gosh like you know how to do photography i'm graduating will you do my photos and that's just how it started spiraling yeah a little a little bit more elevated than just like oh yeah ashley's got a good <laughs> yeah. camera she she probably knows how to use it it's like no you actually know how to use it <laughs> mm-hmm. as an That's associate true. what what kind i know i think you told me uh on a previous conversation on your podcast yeah um what kind of photography uh did your mom do um mainly families and extended families um hilton head is such a tourist destination so over the summer all these tourists and their families come down and they want to memorialize what happened because i mean especially post covid and that's when i started becoming an associate photographer when people Mm. started realizing truly that the time you have with someone is so special and you have no idea whether they're going to be here for your next vacation yeah yeah or like even with the vacations is like i don't even know when the next one we can go on like let's exactly let's photograph this one instead of being like i know for for us it was always just like oh well you know we'll do family photos next year it's like we're we're mm-hmm. we're busy this year or this spring we want to do like wildflower photos but we're busy so we'll do it next year and then it's just like the years just keep adding on mm-hmm. um but yeah that that kind of you know covid woke us up to life uh life is short exactly. and like don't just assume that people are going to be in your life five years from now um but like take the time schedule that photo shoot all of that so that's cool exactly. that you were already you doing know. like kind of yeah you never know but you like you are you were in like the family kind of family mm-hmm. photography so uh seniors a good kind of like uh sister to that instead of like mm-hmm. you know studio or food or whatever um, <laughs> but that's that's very cool has there been something through the years that you've been uh you know having your own business or even uh associate shooting that like you either had a lesson that you learned or someone like shared some advice that you're like "Ooh, this is a game changer yeah so Number one, hard work pays off. Um, And that's something I've also learned just in my personal life. Um, Obviously, it won't come around the first time you try something, but just keep pushing at it and eventually it'll turn around for you. Um, I've learned and gone through that multiple times in my life. And whether that's like the second time something's I've tried something or two or three times, just keep pushing. And that ties, especially when you're being a photographer, especially in the beginning when yeah. you have no clients and you're just trying to get your name out there and instead of just discounting your sessions like for example or like giving like doing giveaways or things like that just keep pushing at it don't knock down your prices and your value but just keep pushing and eventually it will stick and the uh, your ideal client will eventually come to you yeah i love that advice cuz it is really 
it's 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 difficult especially like starting off because you could get like three no's in a row mm -hmm. and just be like all right well no one wants to hire me i'm not good i i or like you've had like i've had those sessions where i went out either just kind of feeling off or something like uh, i wasn't bringing like a game it was like you know b plus game but still like i wasn't super mm -hmm. creative i wasn't really feeling it and then like leaving that just being like ah, these are fine but it's not my best work and like having that happen can really get in your head and and feel like okay well maybe i'm not this isn't for me or maybe people don't want to book me but yeah just like pushing through uh like just telling yourself like i am i'm a good photographer people do want to book with me and like continuing on because sometimes you will get some no's and that is good to get no's if you're getting only yeses yeah. from people um you are uh you're doing That's more too of a much. problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um like i get tell no i get told no all the time all the yeah. time and because i am in a college grad market and majority of the time those grads are paying themselves for their photos i get told all mm -hmm. the time i'm too expensive and like it happens all the time and i've learned to come and deal with the fact that it's just it's okay you're not affordable to everybody and you're not in everybody's yeah. budget especially in like a senior grad market if they're especially if they're paying for it themselves i mean they're college students um but that's where you have to learn like who your ideal market is like are you marketing to the parents who are going to pay for this are you marketing to more of like a sorority girl are you marketing to like the average person and that's what you need to start figuring it out and honestly you'd rather be told no's because it tells you that you're where you should be in your business pricing wise especially um, oh yeah if you're getting told yes all the time you need to raise your prices because you're too cheap yes yeah i i was recently uh on on a podcast and i was talking about that and how like i used to love when people would be like Oh, that's your prices. Um, yeah, like let's yeah. go ahead and book. Like you're a, this is a deal, and I was like, yeah, that's right. I'm a deal. This is good. And mm -hmm. then I learned like, oh no, I don't want to be a deal. I don't want to be like the, the discounted. Like, oh no, go with him because, like, the, you're you're hardly paying anything and you're getting good work. He doesn't, you know. I I didn't know my own value, and I was trying to just like, book out the calendar, and uh, yeah. Like, you know, taking, taking yeses like that, um, takes away from other yeses. There were times mm -hmm. that I booked like a cheap little wedding that I didn't really feel aligned with the couple, but I was like, I've got this date open, so I might as well do it. It all discounted a little bit because they kind of had shocked faces at the mm -hmm. pricing. And then months later had like a dream wedding come in for that same date and i was like oh if i had just stuck with yeah. my prices my value um i would have been able to do what i wanted to instead of like doing something differently so yeah absolutely and one of the biggest things i've learned in business is you can make the same amount of money doing 30 sessions at a lower price as 10 with the higher price and save yourself all the stress and burnout and i think yeah. that was one of the greatest lessons i've learned because Sure, you're not booking as much, but you're making the same amount of money, if not more, as you were when you were running around like a chicken with their head cut off. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then you have more time to work on your business and like yes. create a better client experience and just more time to do stuff around the house, to go enjoy your, your leisure time uh, out at Hilton Head and just like yeah. enjoy the waves. And uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, that was a huge mindset shift for me when I realized like I I really need to be doing like working less, getting paid more, mm -hmm. still creating a great experience and not just like, well, this is the same experience that I was charging X amount. Now I'm charging three times that, but still giving the same experience. Like you also need to elevate what you're doing as you go. Uh, so, but you're also yeah. adding your experience into that. So while you might be at having the same numbers for, uh, on face value, you have, if it, you say you change your prices a year later, you have a year more of experience than you did the year before when you were charging those lower prices. And that's something that people overlook a lot, I think, too. We all want more time in our life. 
I mean, think about it. It's one of the best seasonings. I can't imagine a shepherd's pie without some thyme. What was that? Oh, yeah. No, that makes more sense. Okay. <clears throat> we all want more time in our life. Time is finite. It's a construct. But what if I told you you could create your own time? Right, not exactly, but pretty close. Since I've been using Imagine AI to edit my photos, I have gotten hours and hours of time back that I would have just been sitting in front of my computer, click, click, clicking away, editing all the photos. But now I can use those hours to work on my business, to bring in more leads, or for some leisure time playing Super Mario, trying to beat that one level that I can't. It's those freaking ghosts, they get me every time. Okay, so this is how it works. With Imagine AI, you upload your photos and it reads everything and learns how you took it from the raw files to the edited images. And it will learn to edit just like you. I've already uploaded over 16,000 images and every single catalog I get back is better than the next. If you want to get your time back and get your first 1,500 images edited for free, go to allheartphoto.com slash AI. That's allheartphoto.com slash AI and create more time. All right, now I'm hungry. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is, I'm going into my 15th year of being a photographer. I'm still learning new stuff. I'm still mm -hmm. like experimenting with things and learning my camera and like cameras are getting better. Uh, every, every new oh, yeah. release. I'm just like, oh yeah, there's, there's stuff like we can continue to grow. And like, there's that saying of like, like the stream of water, like as mm -hmm. you're growing and continuing to move like a stream you bring life, but if you stay stagnant, like just a puddle, like that's, you're, you're only bringing like mud and that's whenever like weird bacteria and stuff starts to grow and you don't want bacteria growing on you. Um, so yeah, just continuing to grow as you go is, is great. Um, which speaking of growing, like we can, I, I want to get into like growing into and how to like mm -hmm. position ourselves into being a go-to photographer. So what does that mean really of being like the go-to? Yeah. So for me, that just means being really high in demand. So like for me personally, I book four to five months out in advance. So basically the semester before, usually maybe one or two months before the semester ends, I'm booked out for the next semester. And which does mean I need to start raising my prices because <laughs> it's the, the in that demand regard. is up but yeah. uh -huh. yes but when your demand is up really high and and for me having like all those referrals built up like word of mouth is huge that's where i get most of my bookings actually from word of mouth and like i barely have to do any marketing or any advertising myself and in my personal experience in my opinion that means that you are more of a go-to photographer because people want to go for you without even having to google clumps of photographers they're like oh i already know yeah. who i want yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's speak to that for a minute because that is, yeah. I know marketing is like super crazy scary for a lot of people. It's just like, it's a, it's a businessy word. It's a, I don't know, this could be so many oh, different yeah. things. <laughs> and like that network marketing, the word of mouth, like what are some things that you do that really like sets you apart to where your clients are sharing with other people and their friends of like, yeah. oh, Ashley's great. You need to hire her. Yeah. So actually the first thing I did, and this is a little exercise that everyone can do. That's a business exercise, create a value curve with between you and your competitors nearby and see mm. what they offer and what you could potentially offer and what is different between the two. And whatever is different is the stuff that you need to highlight in whatever marketing you do on your website or anything like that. So for me personally, um, I noticed that number one, um, there wasn't a luxury market in Clemson for like the more higher end, more high quality photos. So I knew that's where I wanted to be. And that's where I started out even as just being able to provide high quality images at a higher price point. Cause then it'll correlate more so in a mindset of a client versus having high quality photos and a low price point. People are always like, what's the catch? So I knew yeah. that that's the mindset I wanted to play into. Um, another thing is majority of the photographers on campus count each of the locations on campus as a separate location. 
Um, and one thing I did that mm. was different was I took the two most iconic places where you can spend maybe five minutes getting the image that someone wants. And I put them together and I said, that's one location. It only counts yeah. as one out of your two. And people still love that. They're like, I don't know why no one does that. Cause we spend five minutes at the location and then we leave. Right. And then we'll spend yeah. 40 minutes at my other location. Yeah. I love that. Uh, the, I mean, just analyzing what other people are doing is so great. And I know like some people kind of shy away from that and like, Oh, don't look at what other mm -hmm. people are doing. Like, Do your own thing. But like, there's mm -hmm. so much to learn from the market around you and in ways to set yourself apart because like, yeah. like that kind of thing is like, if I'm looking for someone and like, okay, well I want this place and I want this one and this one and like I know it's gonna be just like five minutes at this third location and other people are like well to add another location it's gonna be x amount of dollars mm -hmm. and this add-on or you have to go with this package which is longer time and it's like this is so much and then you're just over here like I oh, know that's included and like that yeah. like ironing out those friction points to make a very like streamlined and easy mm -hmm. yes for your clients is huge. So I, I love that you did yeah. that. Yeah. And that's something I talk about. I talk about like all over my website. I'm like Selman Hall, Tillman Hall and Sykes Hall, same location. Don't, you don't have to choose. You don't have to pick because mm -hmm. everyone, those are the two most iconic backgrounds on campus and everybody wants pictures in front of both. So why wouldn't you want to market towards that, especially when no one else is? Yeah. Yeah. And you, you also mentioned, I want to touch on this too, that yeah. whole um, like elevating yourself into that luxury market and not just providing great quality images, good experience at a low price, but at a high mm -hmm. price, like this is high value at a high price. So you're not getting the, like the price shoppers who are just like, mm -hmm. oh, this is a great deal. Like we'll go with her or you're getting the people who have the budget to spend the high price point. Mm -hmm. And then they look at you and they're like, I mean, the images look great. I've heard that your client experience is great, but based on what you're charging, I don't think I'm going to get as good of an experience as I would with someone else. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's like buying, buying like a, a I don't know. I was going to say a Mercedes. I don't know if that's like soup. I guess that's, that's a nicer car, <laughs> but like, uh, but like buying a, a more luxury vehicle, like a, like a mm -hmm. Mercedes Cadillac, BMW, something like that yeah. versus like a Honda Civic. Like mm -hmm. if they're around the same price point, I'd be like, what's wrong with this Mercedes that I can get exactly. it for the same price instead of, yeah, no, I know that getting high quality I'm going to have to pay a little bit more. So um, that's, that's great for, because like starting off, I just wanted to undercut everyone and get mm -hmm. portfolio and get, uh, get work, which I think there is a time and place for that. But then I stayed there and mm -hmm. wanted to be that deal and uh, to be, you know, the, Oh hey, yeah. Go with, go with John. Like, cause he's, he's super cheap, but you get great stuff. And I was really mm -hmm. missing out on a lot of the people who um, would spend more with me uh, who were scared. <laughs> just like, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't trust it. And that goes back to even like analyzing the market and seeing what people are charging mm -hmm. currently. If you can, I know some people don't post their prices online and that's another topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I noticed that there was a huge range of prices in my area, ranging from $50 to about $350 to $400, depending on if it was someone traveling in or if it was a student who was doing your photos. So I knew that I wanted to be at $400 or above because other, that's how you're going to set yourself apart in a market because everyone who's charging, let's say, $350 and lower there's 50 photographers and they're all the same and they all have the mm -hmm. same marketing plan and the same package and everything. And you could have a very similar package. And as long as you're charging $50 more, as long as your branding is there, people are going to be like, Oh, $50 more. They must be better photos because it's yeah. not a huge jump in that regard. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm a coffee snob and like, I will go mm -hmm. into different coffee shops and if there's like, a, a a latte for a dollar 
I'm like, I don't, I don't think this is going to be good. I don't, I don't trust mm-hmm. that this coffee is going to be roasted well. I don't think it's going to taste great. But if I walk in and it's like starting at like four or six dollars, I'm like, mm-hmm. that's about, about good. Like maybe a little bit pricey, but I know that it's going to be good quality coffee. And yeah, I think that is, it's something to, to really keep in mind when you're like pricing yourself and looking at the, the market. Cause, cause also, you know, different markets, different prices it's different in like new york city than it is here in mm-hmm. college station texas it's it's a very uh, very different market yeah. <laughs> pricing wise but yeah looking at everyone around you kind of getting a good sense and doing that value curve that you talked about i think that is so underrated um or not really underrated but just underused by a lot of like people because it's something that's talked about a lot in business and it's mm-hmm. actually something i've learned in my business class and it's just something that the average person doesn't know about, especially in the photography industry, because we don't come from a business background. Right. And we're so creative. don't know these little yeah. tips and tricks. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why I said, like, so if anyone has time later today, sit down and do a value curve and rank you and your competitors on different services or products in the market. And yeah. whatever you defer on is something you need to prioritize in your business versus something where you're the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of times like we're all talking about the same thing. Like, Oh, well Mm -hmm. I, you know, make you feel comfortable in front of the camera. It's like, cool. Every photographer says that, like, what is something different that you do? Uh, Like there's uh, a couple here in town that they like create Spotify playlists for their couples Mm -hmm. for engagement shoots and for the wedding day based on their personalities and the music that they like because this couple is very into music and like music theory and like all this kind of stuff and they've woven that into their brand their website is all about like music and stuff their packages are based on like you know albums or cassettes or something like that and like it's what you think about with them and anyone who like that that's something different like oh like i would feel comfortable if i'm listening to music that i like that mm-hmm. makes sense so i'm gonna go with them that's that's an elevated experience and it's something different that not everyone else is doing so um yeah i i, I love that and we could like spend a whole hour yeah. on, <laughs> on value curve and like how to implement that um are there are there certain things that you would suggest like really really looking at or or even just like how can you start talking about it uh, especially for those who are just like I don't know like I know that I do this thing differently mm-hmm. but how do I talk about it how do I put it out there yeah and one thing that I even wanted to mention first to be like simple something that can set you apart is your editing style mm-hmm. like very simple think about stuff yeah. like that because everyone edits differently I'm one of maybe two photographers that edit naturally in this mm-hmm. area And like I said before, there's like 50 some photographers, but that's something I hone into a lot. Um, So something I do, like going off the editing style example, is I have it in my Instagram bio. I have authentic, timeless, and bright portraits because that's how I like to describe my editing style. And that's the first thing anyone sees on my Instagram Mm. bio. And it's also one of the first things people see on my website when they are on my website on the homepage and on the about me section when I'm talking about like me and my like my photography business on the first the first line you read is authentic bright and timeless and yeah. like to me like that's so important to my branding so I make sure that I say it in multiple ways on multiple different locations and different platforms um, going into that location example where I offer two is the same um, location I have it on my website I have it on my social media on numerous different posts where I talk about like the top locations when I talk about what what makes me different like why do I combine these two why should that be important why would I want pictures at both locations Um, Mm -hmm. I also have a blog post about locations and about how I combine the two and I also have it in their senior style guide that I send out when they book with me I have a section dedicated to locations and with picture examples and descriptions and the first location that they see is Tillman and Sykes and below it says Yes, they are combined. Yes, that's true. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So it's like something I really play up um, just because I know it's different. So I spend less time talking about how many images are included or 
um, what you should wear at a session because it's what everyone else is talking about or like what you should bring. Should you bring your cap and gown? Everyone kind of knows that at this point, just because it's said even by photographers in other locations that they may be following. So I'm trying to feel like what's different and what my ideal client is looking for or could be searching for when they're trying to get ready for their session. Yeah, I think that is a huge thing of putting yourself in their shoes of not what would another photographer, what would I, the photographer, Mm -hmm. want to put out there that I would be looking for, but like, what would a senior who's getting some photos taken and maybe doesn't know anything about photography, maybe they're the first of their friend group who has had their senior Mm -hmm. photos taken and they're just like, I don't know. I'm coming in with no knowledge at all. It was like putting yourself in those shoes of like, what would I be searching for? What would I want? And like the, the searching for is something huge for like uh, blogging titles and SEO oh, wise. If you're like, okay, what would I actually like type into the search engine? Um, and then having those keywords in your posts. And, uh, but yeah, I also love that like you rattled off like five or six different places yeah, <laughs> that you speak to the same, same thing. And I think that's huge because a lot of times we'll be like, well, I posted that once on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I pinned it to the top of my, my profile. So it, people know it like so many, I mean, one yeah. social media, we get like three to 6% of our followers actually see our stuff oh, yeah. now. Probably less than that, even. (laughs) Probably, probably less. Yeah, it's just, it's getting smaller and smaller (laughs) every year as we go. And, um, but like, there's one, we're we're having fewer eyes on the things that we're posting, but also people are are just inundated with information all the time. Mm -hmm. It used to be like, you needed like five to seven times. Yeah of like double now repetit yeah it's like 14 to 20 times of like that's how many times people need to see you see your work or see what you're talking about for it to like finally hit Mm -hmm. oh yeah ashley does these two locations as the same i've seen that i saw that on instagram now i'm on her website oh now i'm on this blog that she and now i've got this this guide that I downloaded and all of them are saying the same thing. It's like, Oh, that is the reason that I'm going to hire her because Mm -hmm. she's, she's great. Editing is great. But like, this is the thing that I really, really want. And like uh, having, having that more than just like, well, I put it out there once and people should know, Mm -hmm. but just like all the place, all the places. Uh, I think that is, uh, it's something that is, is very overlooked. You know, we, we don't think, or don't want to be like annoying too. (laughs) Like that was me. I didn't want to be the annoying person that was like always talking about like, Oh no, I love night photography. I love taking, taking you out at like 10 minutes, uh, during the reception while everyone's dancing and like y'all go out and we'll just get some photos with the stars. And I was like, I feel like I talk about this all the time. And now Mm -hmm it's something that people know me for and something that people hire me for is because they're like, Oh no, we love your night photography work. We know that you're going to be great the rest of the day because like that's, that should be the standard to take great photos the whole wedding day. But now we want this because it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And one good rule of thumb that I've heard is you can post it every nine posts because that's not the first thing they're going to see anymore when they come on your feed. Mm -hmm. And when they scroll, they're going to forget. And another thing is too, like, especially with your like night photography example, there are many different ways that you could post about it without talking about it. Like, even if you just post the picture, but your caption says something else, you're showing your work instead of like telling it, but everyone can still experience and soak it in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I did a new year's Eve post a few months ago and Mm -hmm. did a photo that it wasn't a new year's Eve wedding, but they had fireworks at their wedding. So I posted a photo of like, they were very well lit. And then we also had fireworks and I wasn't like talking about like, well, this is how I set up my flashes to do this Mm -hmm. thing. It was just like, Hey, happy new year, everyone. We're going into 2024. I hope it's a great year, whatever. And then had that. So yeah, like you don't have to say the same thing over and over again. Um, but yeah, just, uh, just being able to, to share. And I like that you mentioned like every nine, nine squares Mm -hmm. on Instagram, like 
it's a, it's a whole different thing. And, you know, everyone is not like your mom, just like your mom probably sees yeah, everything because everything. <laughs> yeah, just like going through your archives and like, Oh yeah, that one was great. Mm-hmm. I forgot to double tap on that one. And like, not everyone out there is going to be getting all of your stuff or scrolling through all of your things. So like having that repetition is not going to hurt you and it's not going to be annoying. There are, there, there are some educators that I follow closely Uh, like some that I've, I've taken multiple courses from uh, two man studios, Erica and Lanny man. They post the same photos all the time like they'll post their new mm-hmm. stuff but a lot of times it's just like oh here is that photo in turkey that was like really blue and then they had like some orange lights going off over here i'm like i know this photo really well because i've seen it over and over again over the years but someone new to them what in those hell? nine squares wouldn't know and they'd be like oh this is an amazing photo and yeah every time that it pops up i'm like oh yeah double tap yeah this is a, this is a great photo mm-hmm. it's still a great photo five years later and like I, I think we we get into that that idea of everything has to be new i can't talk about the same thing i talked about uh you know promoting my wardrobe guide uh you know six months ago so i can't talk about it again this calendar year i have to wait um but yeah like just uh, it, it also makes uh, posting and marketing a lot easier because you you don't have to have Absolutely. 150 different things to talk about. It's like, I can talk about these like seven points over and over. Yeah. And you can always repurpose that content too. Like you don't necessarily have to do a feed post mm-hmm. for like each time either. Like you could do a reel or a story post or, cause I found like people who read, like watch my stories are completely different people than like my posts. Cause they oh, yeah. show up on different spots in the feed. So mm-hmm. saying it even like in the same week, like no one would ever know unless it's like your close friend or your mom, because they're not going to be watching both your stories and have you show up in their feed. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I like to repurpose anything on my feed, like later on that week, mm-hmm. three or four days later, I'll, I'll just share it to my stories and talk a little bit about oh, it. Yeah. And that is usually, like you said, a different audience. Cause I am, I'm more of a story watcher when I get on Instagram, like I'll scroll mm-hmm. through the feed every now and then, but I'm mostly just going through stories and I'm, I do like, the same that's, thing. Yeah. It's, it's just more real. It's like the highlights. It's yeah, the yeah. highlights almost. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like, I know that if I scroll, I'll get lost. I know that. So if I don't have a lot of yeah. time, I'll flip through the stories because Instagram's algorithm is really good at picking the people you click on their stories the most and puts them in the yes. front. Yes. So the people who I want to check on, they're right there and easy to look at. So that's where I normally put like the most important information or if that's something I want seeing quickly, I'll put on my stories versus my feed or even reels. Cause I think reels is more like long-term, especially mm-hmm. nowadays. Yeah. Um, it's not more short-term. And another thing that I didn't even mention is using your blog posts as captions. And oh, yeah. I do that all the time. And so like one day I'll boot, I'll do like the whole list. Like if I said the top 10, whatever, I'll list out the top 10 on one post. And then the next post, maybe a couple of days later, I'll break down the first one. And then a couple of days later, I'll break down the second one and so on and so forth. And that's creating like, that's creating a lot of different posts, 11 different posts that you can use from one blog post. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And then you could even break down even further to talk about like a certain aspect of one of those. And it's like repurposing content is gold. Um, Cause it's just like, you don't have to start from zero. You've already got this that you oh, can yeah. pull from. Like whenever I post about new podcast episodes, I take uh, whatever like intro caption, uh, not caption, but like the intro show notes of like, yeah, who was on this week, what we talked about. I just copy that over, yeah. put it right in the caption, the and thing. that's my <laughs> caption. I'm like, yeah, this is I great. The like, same thing. <laughs> and then I just yeah. add, click the link in the bio. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And that's, I do the same exact thing because you have the words already down and mm-hmm. like, you can choose whether or not to reword it. And like another thing I do, like with my blog posts, is I'll take the featured image and I'll post it to my stories with the link to the blog. And so that brings people over to your website. And yeah. that's another way to repurpose your content into stories that where you're still getting your social media people engaged, but they're mm-hmm. just affecting your SEO versus your follower count. 
Yep. And we haven't even talked about Pinterest and like how you can repurpose oh. <laughs> all of yeah, that into exactly. Pinterest too. I just and use, like, I use the uh-uh. same thing I do for Pinterest. I just put on my mm-hmm. stories, the same yeah. exact Canva download. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And like, I, I love Pinterest cause it is so long form and there's like, there's one photo that I took at a wedding in 2014 that oh, yeah. is still one of my highest repin it's just like people just keep sharing it because it was a cute little flower girl who had a bubble gun and she's just like running down the aisle yeah and it's bubbles (laughs) yeah i I was like (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely and it's just something that like it continues to live on i posted that photo on social media it is gone it is buried uh you know you'd have to scroll back i mean i've repurposed it (laughs) obviously multiple (laughs) times but like you'd still have to scroll back a good bit uh to see that photo but yeah i mean taking a lot of the repurposing that you've already talked about and then putting that toward pinterest is just it's gonna grow your your website and your social media too just because that's where people are going to look for inspiration like that's the whole thing that pinterest is oh yeah absolutely and that's some that's my goal for this year is to get better at pinterest because same i'm so good about repurposing my blog posts and putting them like on instagram which Mm -hmm. is linked to my facebook which is the easiest thing ever (laughs) um in terms of marketing but pinterest is the one thing where that's the one place i forget to go but i've learned that you can just you can just batch it so like whenever I remember, yeah. I just go in and I do all the blog posts that I haven't done until then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's one of I, those content, like you said, it's long form. So it doesn't matter when you post it. No. Yeah. Tailwind is amazing because I will just go in there and mm-hmm. just upload a bunch of the images that I just put in my blog and then caption those. And then I can just schedule them to be like, yeah, put like post three of these a day for the next 15 days and then i don't have to think about anything for two more weeks until all of that content is done and then i can go in and upload more stuff so yeah it's it feels very daunting especially like the pinterest uh gurus who are just like you need to be posting like 10 to 20 pins a day like this is overwhelming but yeah just like starting off i'm wanting to get started Mm -hmm. i used to have like tens of thousands of of views a day or a month or whatever it is the um and then it got down to like 120 <laughs> and uh yeah. slowly that's one of my 2024 goals is to be more consistent and better with pinterest yeah and the reality is if you're not getting clients from pinterest don't stress that you need to follow these pinterest gurus who do it for a living and like mm-hmm. for like etsy i get it you're making money from people clicking it and going to your shop but as a photographer, if you find that Pinterest isn't what's getting you your ideal client, don't focus on it. Like have it be on your back burner, like how I do mine. Like whenever you remember, just go in and do it. Don't feel like yeah. you need to stress like you do. Um, don't feel like you need to spread out too thin. That's one thing that I always say is find one or two modes of marketing and focus on them. Like I mentioned, I have my Facebook tied to my Instagram. I don't even open my Facebook business page unless I get a notification. I don't post to it. I just do it automatically from Instagram. So I don't even have to look at it and worry about it. It's just something that I don't want on my plate. Yep. Yep. That's one less thing to worry about, but you're still serving that Mm -hmm. portion of the market who's still on Facebook and maybe they, they just thrive over there and they love being on Facebook. But you know, if you're not, uh, just that one little click of like share to Facebook, that one one little toggle that you need to do. Oh, yeah. You're you're missing out on possibly like I get a lot of parents uh, that that's what it is. It's on parents. Facebook, and then they'll see the photo and be like, "Ooh, hey," and and then that's how you know the the couples like, "Oh yeah, my my mom was like she saw your stuff and shared, and now we're here," uh, mm-hmm. which I'm sure also very huge for exactly the same with seniors yeah yeah so like the seniors are all on instagram and that's Mm -hmm. who i really want to speak to and like basically i want them to i don't know what the word is but it's fine um basically (laughs) i want them to have an experience where they (laughs) um where they understand like who i am and they can like feel for who i am through a screen versus me talking to their parents on facebook while yes, right. their parents may be paying for it, but if 
if I was a mom, which I'm not yet, but if I was, and I had, if I was picking a photographer and then my daughter came and she was like, I want this one. I love this. I love this. I love this. Guess who I'm going to go with? I'm going to go with the one that is going to give my daughter the best experience that's the one she wants in the end. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like, if you are the senior and your mom's coming to you and like, I found this photographer, check them out. And then you go on Instagram and then it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah, it's no, I love her personality. You. This mm -hmm. is great. Like, you love the photos and what you saw on Facebook. I love the person that I'm seeing on Instagram. Exactly. Let's, this is great. Thanks, mom. Let's go. Uh, so, yeah, I love, I love that there's like so many different places that all speak in different ways to different clients. Because, um, mm -hmm. like, some people are just killing it on TikTok and some oh, yeah. are, are, are in uh, LinkedIn and just like making connections over there. Exactly. And it depends on who you're marketing, like who you're marketing to, who your ideal client is. So you need to figure that out first. Cause I mean, if you're doing mm. commercial or headshots, LinkedIn is where you gotta be. Like that's where you're going to yes. get everybody. But if you're yeah. doing like seniors, if you're doing high school seniors, I would say Instagram and TikTok are yeah. probably the biggest. Um, I focus primarily on my college seniors. So I stay on Instagram. I don't mess that much with TikTok. Um, I'm going to see if that works this year though. That's what I'm trying to lean towards to get more, um, high school seniors and more of like the Gen Z population, but mm. um, it's definitely, especially like with the times changing, the new generation coming in, it's where you need to reevaluate where your ideal client is hanging out and yeah. go there and be seen there. Even that right. it's like if you're like networking, like me, I go hang out at this coffee shop every single weekend and I work on photography, and it's the same coffee shop. So like the baristas know who I am; they know that I'm a photographer. And I sit by the door, mm -hmm. I have my computer facing the door, and I can't tell you how many times a girl has walked by me and said, do you do photos? Like, yeah. you have to go where they're hanging out. And if yeah. you, like, even that's, like, networking in town, even. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, like, don't be afraid. Like, don't, like, just get in the corner and, like, face your computer yeah. to be the corner. Be very strategic. Like, I don't want anyone to, yeah, just, like be there be seen i angle my screen towards where people are walking in so they have mm -hmm. to walk by people are nosy yeah they are be, yeah they are T and also College like don't girls? always have like yeah. headphones on because that's yes. like less approachable like i'll just put in like one earbud but I'll have the one, one and i'll do the opposite ear i'll do the yeah. opposite ear <laughs> so they can't <laughs> see it the whole thing it's all yeah. strategic and it is. and then you even make make friends with the baristas and I'll always post that I'm at the coffee shop even when I'm there sometimes when I remember mm -hmm. and it gets reposted by the coffee shop because they're a smaller local place oh, and yeah. that brings even more people to see so all their customers see your photography page and they'll be like oh I'm interested click and it brings mm -hmm. them over to me and then they go down that little rabbit hole and they might not yeah. inquire with me that day, but eventually sometimes they do. Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple, they were, I don't know, maybe a year into their relationship. And I literally ran into them in line at a coffee mm -hmm. shop, like backed up <laughs> into the guy. I was like, oh, hey, sorry. And then we just started chatting and then exchanged Instagrams. And then they're like, oh, hey, you're a photographer. Cool. And like, we just became friends. Maybe three years later, they got engaged and they're like, John, mm -hmm. we already know this guy. Like if, if I had just been like, oh, sorry, like whatever, I'm just going to like keep my head down and go get my latte. Um, that never would have happened. That would have been, and they, they were great. They had a, a donut pyramid for a cake and it was so tasty awesome. yeah but uh but yeah no i think that's uh that's a great a great word of advice and like this this whole conversation has been so full um so Absolutely. i'm 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 excited uh for for the listeners and for for this whole thing any any last words you want to share with with everyone um before we kind of get to the end here yeah so the big thing is, like I said earlier, like hard work pays off, like don't give up. Um, it, just because it's not working now doesn't mean there's not something you can change or fine tune or even just like keep pushing at it. Um, another thing is don't be afraid to spend money to make money. That's something I haven't mentioned yet. 
and mm -hmm. that's something that I have started learning how to adjust my lifestyle towards and I found that it works like investing in your business and your education as a photographer is huge and I don't always mean money um, you can always invest your time into free education and that's one of the biggest trade-offs and like life yeah. lessons that I've learned is even just investing your time is huge into like building up yourself either in like your personal life or in your business. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I mean, there's so many great podcasts out there just oh, yeah. like, <laughs> like mine and yours that are, they are free and there's so much mm -hmm. great education. Um, and then like taking that and actually implementing it. Um, is is a huge hurdle for me at least oh, like absolutely. i'll go to conferences <laughs> and just have a journal full of notes mm -hmm. and then just get right back into the day-to-day -day routine and then like three months later i'm like oh yeah i should probably implement some of you these things implement that. yeah mm -hmm. absolutely so that's the part two of my advice instead yes. of just like just <laughs> don't just invest everything take yeah. that information and use yeah. it to your own advantage Oh yeah. I can't tell you how many courses that I purchased in the early days and just like, they just sat <laughs> <Never> there. <opened. laughs> yeah. Never opened. Or I like started yeah, I it and I was like, I was okay. always, I was always the person who was like, mm, do I want to spend the money I just made? I was mm -hmm. always the opposite. And now that I've started investing in like, I have yep. like this monthly subscription and to like the senior course and I'm in this other one and I'm like, this is so useful. And yeah. it doesn't mean that like every bit of information is going to be new. You might know some of it and it might just be like a new take on it or even just like being like the third time you heard something, you're like, okay, like maybe I'm actually going to do it this time. Mm -hmm. And you find that like, just because you didn't think it would work, it might work. And as long as you just try it and you can always change it, it's your business. <laughs> like right. at the end of yeah. the day, it's yours. <laughs> And no one's going to care how many times you change the process or what no. your packages look like or what your branding looks like, your website looks like. At the end of the day, it's yours and you get to decide how everything comes and goes. Yeah. Okay. I love that. And like, yeah, it's, it's such a good, like, there's so many times, like even I'm sure that there's listeners who just heard us talking about Pinterest for a minute and they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. I know. I, I've heard that over and over again that I need to start posting. You can just go don't, go don't do it. it. Like you, I don't do it as much it. as I should. I definitely don't. I, I like us yeah. talking about it. Is I'm going to add that to my to do list for the rest of the week. I'm like I need to schedule yeah. some time. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, actually, this has been great. I have loved this. Um, how like before we get into like where people can find yeah. you, listen to your podcast, all of that. There's something that I like to do where we talk about uh, what we're loving this week, and it can be literally anything a uh, new you know tv show book whatever uh what are you loving this week Ooh, okay there's a few and actually this is funny because i actually have a section on my about page which is like my like my favorite things and be right below the header it says what i'm currently uh, obsessed with <laughs> oh nice <laughs> and, <laughs> and right now it says my chug puppy chanel who's coming up to visit me this week and i'm so excited and orange Celsius. <laughs> and <Okay>. yeah, <laughs> it's been completely random things. And to add yeah. to that, something I haven't written on there yet is, I guess I, it just ended, but I was binging the Disney Plus Percy Jackson. <laughs> yes, and I binged that was all so of good. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. Yeah. I was excited. It was very good. I was, I was a little worried. I was a little worried. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, it was one of like the first book series I really got into when I was younger other than Harry Potter <laughs> mm. so after the movies I was like I mean they were okay right as it's long like... as you weren't thinking about the books right yeah <laughs> and so I was concerned <laughs> for the show um but I think at first when I saw that Rick was a part of it I was like okay it's gonna be fine and mm -hmm. even like with the changes they made to the plot line I was like I'm okay with that it makes sense and I'm happy yeah i thought they did a really good job and like it mm -hmm. was it was also very entertaining too um because sometimes like it'll just kind of be slow because you know some books are kind of like yeah. have like some slow points but i felt like like the pace of all the episodes really was fast. really good too it went it went and too fast <laughs> it went too fast and because there was eight episodes and that was because mm. it was like 
a first season. It was like a pilot season because that's how it works on Disney Plus. Yeah. And so it did go a lot faster than it did in the books. And they did miss out on a lot of things, but I think they hit everything they needed to and they hit it well. Yeah. Yeah. I so I I did not read Percy Jackson. Um and I also didn't see the oh. movie. So this was all like new to me um and i i loved it i i thought it was really great and i love um like a lot of the the actors the characters that they got to play different people in there um huge jason manzucas fan so seeing him i was just like Mm -hmm. cool i like this guy um and he just played himself pretty much uh just as a god yeah yeah basically Um, (laughs) yeah but yeah i thought it was really cool uh my my wife and i both went through like as it was coming out every week and we were like this is like i would watch this is it old every school night <laughs> like yeah. every tuesday night i watched mm-hmm. it and yeah. i was so excited for the whole thing um like i i read them when they first came out uh i got them for like a christmas present or something the original nice. box set that they don't even make anymore i found out they don't even make <laughs> the original covers so i need to go home and find them <laughs> because i don't know where they are and i just found out that they're they don't make them anymore and they're worth yeah. like 60 they're even piece. more valuable now <laughs> and, <laughs> and i'm like cool i don't know where they cool. are i don't know they're in a box i would love to probably. have them on my bookshelf now <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah huge uh very i would recommend that also Mm -hmm. for anyone who's like if you like uh like fantasy like adventure stories and stuff like that it was really good if you grew up a greek mythology nerd Mm -hmm. it's for you yeah oh yeah the way that they tied in all of that i was like that was really good it's yeah he does a really good job and he he's done it with other um religions too he's done it with like norse and egyptian and i've read those books and they're done really well too so he's okay. definitely he's done he does his research and he like creates this whole world around them which is really cool nice okay well cool yeah uh go go check that out disney plus um i'm loving i'm loving the book that i recently finished uh it's a let's see fiction that's the not real mm-hmm. part yes okay yes. i always get those <laughs> mixed up um but uh yeah it's a it's a fiction book uh called um more than this by patrick ness and it does start off pretty slow but it's like in a uh, it keeps you very curious of just like i have no idea what's going on what is like where like it's it's a guy who just like wakes up in his childhood home but everything is like the the yard is overgrown like three four feet tall grass and like there's dust over everything like like everything just stopped and no one has been there in decades and he's alone trying to figure out what what is going on where he is all of that and then like as the chapters progress you start to like learn different things Mm -hmm. about him and get clues of like what's going on and like is this like some sort of like weird version of hell or is this like real life is this you know what's going on and yeah there's like a twist uh, a few twists in it that i was just like what okay (laughs) and i I love i love those kind of books books, so oh i'm gonna write that down i love those books yeah. So this I'm this came recommended from I love asking people the question of like what's a book or movie or TV show um mm-hmm. that like you would just love to be able to watch again for the first time knowing nothing about it and that was how this got recommended and I was like okay I'm going to check wow. it out and uh and it was really good I lost it for a bit um I I mostly read on planes. I love to read on a plane for some reason. Um, So I had, it got lost in my luggage and like got put away in the suitcase. And then it wasn't until I was packing to go on another trip that I was like, it's here. I've been looking for this book. Uh, So I was able to finish it this last, uh, this last plane ride. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Okay. This has been great. Um, I can't believe it's almost been an hour. Uh, so uh, we do that every time. <laughs> I know, yeah, <laughs> but it's it's good. Like uh, it's uh, it's a great, um, great conversation. I could literally talk for hours. Um, where can people find you? Where can they, you know, listen to your podcast? All of the all the things. Yeah, so you can find me at my website, 
www.ashleysnyderphotography.com and it's A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H, not E-Y. <laughs> um, uh-huh. Just going to start it there. Um, you can also find me on Instagram by the same name at Ashley Snyder Photography or with my podcast at Let It Click Podcast, um, which you can listen to on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll have links to all that in the show notes too. Uh, so everyone go follow Ashley, say, Hey, go listen to the podcast. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed getting to chat with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun and I love getting to talk about this and to teach others. So this was such a great opportunity. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Wisdom and the Tangents podcast. As always, you can check out all the show notes along with some free resources and tools to just make your working experience even better at podcast.allheartphoto.com. You can follow the show on Instagram at wit.pod. It's W-I-T-T dot P-O-D. Ashley is at Ashley Snyder Photography. She spelled it out in the podcast. I'll do it again now. Who cares? Uh, It's Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H, not with the Y. Um, But yeah, Ashley Snyder, Snyder, but yeah, Ashley Snyder Photography. I will have that linked in the show notes as well. Um, You can find me everywhere at All Heart Photo. Please leave us a review. That would be amazing. And subscribe to the show wherever you listen to this so you don't miss an episode. Next week, I've got a great conversation with Kerr Tubin. We are talking about how to fill your calendar during the slow season. And so good. Lots of laughs. Good time. My computer cut out a couple times, so that it's going to be fun. I haven't edited that one yet, but we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah. Tune in next week, and uh, until then, I will see you on Instagram. Bye, y'all.